I don't know, man. I'm pleasantly surprised that they signed Sonny Gray. I was uh, I was skeptical for a couple of reasons. You know, were, would they be willing to spend the money? That's number one. Number two, would they be willing to winning? Uh, you know, some type, some type of bidding contest. I know the Reds really wanted him. I know the Braves wanted him. There were some other teams calling his agent. I mean, Sonny Gray was uh, uh, obviously on the very short list of the best available starting pitchers on this free agent market. And I think the Cardinals did well to get him. I like him a lot. I, I You know, I, I like him a lot. Now, this doesn't mean all the problems are solved. Uh, the Cardinals do have a much improved bottom of the rotation. And again, I keep trying to tell everyone why. I, I don't believe I have to keep explaining this. But uh, when you had all the, when you had so much trashy pitching last year in those four and five spots, basically not even major league level pitching, uh, you've added some innings munchers and some guys that roll up some good quality starts. We know that Lynn's got to improve. We know that. We know that Kyle Gibson is actually a hell of a lot better than a lot of Cardinals fans uh, give him credit for. So Mo went to work, and he strengthened the bottom of the rotation, which, yeah, is important. Because you could have Juan Marichal and Don Drysdale at the top of your rotation. If you have garbage at 3, 4, and 5, it won't matter. Or if you have a bad bullpen, it won't matter. The, the whole idea is having a strong foundation from 1 through 5, plus some depth behind that. That's the key. Everyone was like salivating and focusing and obsessing over the top of the rotation. They also had to take care of the bottom of the rotation, so they've done that. Is Sonny Gray a number one starter? And I bet you, Jim Hewer, if we waited a few minutes for the uh, text message line to fill up, everyone would be saying, no, are you stupid? Uh. Hell no, he's not a number one starter. Hell no. What are you even talking about? He's not a number one starter. Uh, Will Leach and I were talking about that today on Seeing Red, which is available for you. We we talked about the Cardinals' three moves. And, um, and uh, you, you know, jumped all over the place. So you, you go to 590thefan.com or through the 590thefan app, and you can listen to the new Seeing Red. It timed in at less than an hour. You can fast forward through stuff if we're getting on your nerves, but it's there for you, 590 the Fan. Or through the 590 the fan app, and um, that would be, uh, or wherever you, wherever you, you've already, uh, you know, perhaps bookmarked it on wherever you get your your podcast. So the reason why, um, the reason I'll tell you since, since I asked that question because I'm going to answer it for you. Uh, why I believe, yeah, um, Sonny Gray is a number one starter. And uh, if you disagree, for the first thing I would tell you is, um, well, you know, it's not, it's, no, it's not 1968. <laughs> Number one starters in, say, ni- in the late 60s, early 70s, maybe even into the early 80s. I don't know. Uh, the definition of a number one starter was a hell of a lot different than it is now. So it would be ludicrous and stupid uh, to actually view a guy – is he a number one starter? To view it by a um, a standard that was in place decades ago, the game has changed. In case you did not notice, I think you have. So by today's standards, he's absolutely a number one starter. And if you think uh, you think I'm nuts, okay, well let me do what I normally do, which is to go to the facts. I know that makes me really unfashionable in these United States of ours. But what do you mean facts? Who cares about that, right? I do. <laughs> Um, okay, you tell me if this isn't the profile of a number one starter. Sonny Gray. Well, finished second to Garrett Cole in the American League Cy Young voting this year. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Pretty significant, huh? That sounds like a that sounds like a guy that would classify as a number one starter. He had the best fielding independent ERA among all major league starting pitchers, two point eight three. He had the third best ERA, 2.79, among big league starters. The only guys that had a better ERA were Blake Snell and Garrett Cole. Uh, he ranked he ranked first among big league starters in home run rate. He only allowed 0.39 per nine innings. 
and the 319 slugging percentage against Gray was the second lowest against any major league starting pitcher. Are you following me on this so far? <laughs> no, I don't know, Bernie. Yeah, come on now. He's about a number three at best. Okay, he's way up there, high on all the leaderboards and the stuff that matters. But he's a number three. I keep hearing that. Peoples, put down the glue pot. <laughs> it's t- it, we're almost into 2024. You can't judge these guys like, well, you know, Tom Seaver was a number one. Yeah, he was. So was my guy Jim Palmer. So was the immortal Bob Gibson. Those days are over, man. Sorry. All right. So let's recap because I'm going to pound this home. I'm going to irritate the heck out of people that don't understand baseball. Um, second in the American League Cy Young voting in 23. Had the best fielding independent ERA, which is a real thing, by the way. Had the very best in all of baseball by a starter this season. He had the third best standard ERA, 2.79. Number three on a list of many, 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 with only Blake Snell and Garrett Cole better. He ranked, uh, as I mentioned, he ranked first among big league starters in, in terms of having the lowest home run rate. He allowed only 0.39 per nine innings. And the 319 slugging percentage, percentage against Gray was the second lowest against any Major League starter. Uh, with 5.3 wins above replacement, otherwise known as War, Gray was tied for third in the majors with Kevin Galsman, and only Zach Wheeler and Spencer Strider had more wins above replacement than Gray in 2023, and it wasn't by much. Uh, it, you know, they were all in that same neighborhood. Uh, among innings qualified uh, MLB starters in 2023, Gray had more wins above replacement than, let me take a deep breath, Garrett Cole, Logan Webb, Zach Galen, Aaron Nola, Blake Snell, Justin Steele, Corbin Burns, Merrill Kelly, Luis Castillo, Jordan Montgomery, Dylan Cease, Pablo Lopez, George Kirby, Framber Val- Valdez, uh, Lucas Giolito, Chris Bassett, and many, many others. Huh. I ain't no number, ain't no number one starter, Bertie. Gray ranked third among MLB starters in win probability added. Only Cole and Snell did better. He was also in the top 20, 25 for most innings, highest strikeout rate, and quality starts. Uh, this past season, opponents hit 226 against him with a 288 on base percentage and a 319 slug. Um, yeah, that that, that kind of makes him better than Dakota Hudson, I think, right? Um <laughs> All right, let's go back five seasons, the last five seasons since 2019. He's 10th among MLB starters in wins above replacement. He's ninth in adjusted ERA, 38% above the average in terms of starting pitchers. He's 10th in standard ERA, 11th in fielding independent ERA. And over that time, he's also got the third lowest home run rate against. He's also 21st in strikeouts per nine. And only 17 pitchers have made more starts than Sonny Gray since the beginning of the 19th season. So, you know, I really don't care about labels, but I know people fixate on them. So if you're trying to classify him, well, what is he, a one or is he a two? He's a three, he's a four, he's a five. Listen, if you're going by the factual criteria and also willing to acknowledge it's not the late 60s, he is a number one starter by today's standards and definition. Uh, that's that's irrefutable. Uh, you can try to push back, but, you know, don't hurt yourself because it's not going to work. When you're like number one, two, three uh, or better and, you know, one, two, three, you know, all over the top ten in all these categories and it goes back five years, well, what, what do you have to do to be a number one starter? I don't know. Some people say, well, you know, he only won eight games last year. How can you be a number one starter? You only win eight games. Uh, it's called run support. Didn't have much. It was one of those years where on days that he pitched, uh, the boys didn't, you know, bang the drum too much and bring home a lot of runs. One other thing about him, you say, well, you know, he is 34. Okay, there's a risk factor involved. Listen, I'm going to get to the other stuff. I know so many people are salivating for the negatives. I, I, I take care of you. I'll take care of you. You know, don't worry. I know you need to hate. I know it. I'll uh, I'll throw you some red meat, but just give me some time to work all you work all the way through this. Um, but one of the things, like he's thirty four years old. First of all, the Cardinals uh, limited their liability. 
because they gave him a three-year deal, and it averages $25 million a year. And the point being, they had to win a bet bidding contest to get him, so they did. They, 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 you know, they anteed up. And uh, with his history, and last season he was tremendous, and really the three previous seasons he's been tremendous, his career trend, even though he's 34 years old, uh, is really on a positive track. And um, you need to know this if you don't know it already, and you know, I'll try to be not obnoxious about it because I wouldn't expect a lot of people to go look at StatCast stuff. And this is not, uh, this isn't mumble, mumble jumble stuff. He developed the new pitch, and that's the pitch that everybody was tapping into last year. It was the sweeper, which is basically an enhanced slider, which 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 has got more of a diagonal break from like up in the zone to down in the zone. It worked beautifully for Sonny Gray in 2023. It made his pitching arsenal a lot more imposing. So last season, according to Satcast, there were 203 plate appearances that ended with Gray throwing that diabolical sweeper. 203 plate appearances. Not 20, not 3, 203. Opponents hit 097 against the pitch, and they slugged 118. They swung and missed at that pitch at a rate of 41%. And the strikeout rate for Gray on that pitch, 50 percent. They had no home runs against the Gray Sweeper. They managed only four doubles. The other 15 hits in uh, 195 at-bats were singles. So he comes here at age 34, but he's got a killer pitch that's made a huge difference in his work. In fact, we hear, well, every, well Bernie, everyone's adding a sweeper. Okay, it's a gimmick. No, it's not a gimmick because uh, a lot of pitchers have incorporated to, to, with great impact. And, and uh, better performance. According to StatCast, last season, 2023, Gray's version of the sweeper was the most effective sweeper in the majors last season. And is he a one-trick pony? No. StatCast, they, assal- they assign value to every pitch that a pitcher throws that's in his toolkit. Uh, StatCast said Sonny Gray in 2023, in addition to having the best sweeper in the majors among uh, st- among starting pitchers, all pitchers. Uh, he had plus value with his four-seam fastball, his cutter, his curve, and his sinker. His changeup was slightly below average. Now, some people will say, well, you know, his velocity's gone down a little burn. You've got to acknowledge that. Okay, I acknowledge it. That's fine. But I also acknowledge something else. Uh, and uh, if you don't want to listen to me, Jay Jaffe at Fangraphs pointed that out. Uh, Gray's a pitcher who, quote, relies more on spin command and deception than velocity. So my point, the point to know, some guys can get away with having a drop in velocity because they got all this tricky stuff. Heck, Adam Wainwright did it for years when the miles per hour started to dip. Uh, Velocity doesn't make Sonny Gray what he is. Sonny Gray's got a lot of stuff going on, man, a lot of things he can throw at you. And he's really good. No, by the way, his miles per hour on his fastball last year was 93, okay? We're, we're not talking 87, all right? Uh, I love this signing. He's never had a serious arm injury. He's been sidelined with relatively minor things like a back, hamstring, pectoral, rib. Um, but he's coming to the Cardinals at a really good time in his career, and they're really fortunate to have him. They, they strengthened the bottom of the rotation. And now they added a star on the top. You know, just like we're doing with the Christmas trees. You've got to put that star on the top. And even though some of you, you know, will say, well, unless he's Bob Gibson, I, uh, I ain't going to recognize this. It amazes me how many people like on Twitter and X or whatever you want to call it, they're just laying in wait. They couldn't wait. They were so aroused. They couldn't wait to hate on whatever Mosaic did here, you know. And I think it's really, really funny because these are people that really don't really care whether the moves made sense or not. Now, for all of the um, hate-filled, uh, the hate-filled hearts out there, and by the way, I'm being sarcastic because I, you know, I happen to think this is totally legitimate. I'm re- I'm pleased with what Mozeliak has done, tip of the cap, and all that, because he is uh, has refurbished the starting rotation that was a disgrace last year. But there's got to be more. It, it's not enough. As as much as I like what has been done, it's not enough. Now, he doesn't have to pass any kind of litmus test to satisfy me. I just want to see more starting pitching depth, and I'd like to see more quality at the top. That's all. 
Like, I, I, I don't have a demand of any specific starting pitcher. And those of you say, well, you know, if they didn't get Yamamoto, then they don't want to win. Now, come on. Quit, quit setting up false tests here, okay? The key was to improve your rotation at the bottom, but also at the top. They did it at the top, but they got to do more, in my opinion, and they certainly need to have more depth. Two points on that. You go into um, 2024. This is what, let's start with the depth first. You go into 2024, and um, pardon me till I get to this. Thank you. And uh, this has got – listen, man, I can't say this factually now because the offseason isn't finished. We don't know what other teams are going to do. Uh, but right now I find it hard to believe the Cardinals would not have the oldest rotation in the majors. Gray is 34. Miles Michaelis turns 36 late next season. Steven Matz turns 33 in May. Uh, Gibbs, Kyle Gibson is 36. Lynn, Lance Lynn turns 20 – excuse me, 37 in May. And now you got waiting in the wings as your sixth starter, uh, Zach Thompson, who's age 26. Now, Mazalek has limited the liability because he brings in two guys, Lynn and Gibson, on one-year deals only, but although the club has the protection and an option for 2025. A three-year deal for Gray is absolutely reasonable, unless you thought, um, you know, the starting pitch is cheap. You can't have it both ways, my friends. Can't have it both ways. Sorry, not allowed. You pick one thing or the other. You can't sit and whine about how they don't want to spend money, and then when they spend money and they beat out several other teams for Gray, you say, well, I wouldn't have given him three years. That's really stupid. You can't have it both ways. What? What? You think he was going to sign here for two when he's getting when he's uh, getting offers very similar? If the Cardinals had to do something, it's probably to guarantee the third year. You want him to spend? You want them to think bigger than they have been? Well, they did it. You can't have it both ways, okay? Thank you. Um, but if something goes wrong with this group, and you never know, so I like the protection that's built in. Uh, and I, I forgot to mention, Matt and Michaelis have two years remaining on their deal, so they're not they're not tied in for a long period of time. But if enough goes wrong with this group, and you never know, because of the age factor and whatever else. Mosellock's going to be scrambling for starting pitching assistance at the 2024 trade deadline and then again after the season. I'm not buying some of these guys as depth, quality depth. I like Zach Thompson. I like him better than I think a lot of people do. But, you know, uh, it's good to have him waiting in the wings and maybe helping you out as a swingman or whatever you want to call him that you could plug him into your rotation if, you know, somebody's got to go in the IL or whatever. But you never have enough pitching. And the thing of it is, rather than just collecting guys, um, I'd like to see the Cardinals ratchet it up. And, it, you know, it, I think it's going to be – it would have to be a trade just to get another starter that you can slide in there. Because the other problem – this is part two. Uh, I don't think anyone's buying Miles Michaelis as a number two starter. Now, in fairness to Michaelis, because believe it or not, it's okay to look at the pros and the cons. Is there a reason for hope? Is all hope gone? You know, whatever. Um, you know, his fielding independent ERA last year was 4.27. My, my point being, he's not that far from being where he needs to be, where you could consider him to be like an acceptable number two starter. Ideal number two starter? No. Acceptable? Yeah. And there's really not – when you got a guy that a 4.27 4. Uh, fielding independent ERA, and fielding independent ERA is much more of, of an accurate measure of a guy's quality than standard ERA. But anyway, uh, there's still nothing wrong with a guy, as, as Michaelis did last year, finished fourth in the majors in innings pitched and made 33 starts. No, 34 starts. And um, – you know, uh, gave you um, gave you a quality start like fifty percent of the time. You like to have that a little little higher, sure. But I can't assume that Michaelis will be better and be closer to the form they, the Cardinals need him to be in. To to you know, you say, well, I'm I'm fine with him as a number two. I got reservations, but I also leave the door open that we'll see some improvement because you know what, he throws just as hard as he he, he has been throwing 
and he's got a great variety of pitching. I mean, he's got all kinds of ways to get hitters out. And to revisit something I've said often, and I'm going to say it again, and I said it on Seeing Red with Will Leach. You can listen to the fresh one at, uh, again, 590thefan.com or through the 590 Fam app. Uh, he needs to focus on pitching. He needs to put all this other stuff aside. It's like, well, i got to be the guy that takes over for Wayno, so I better start showing leadership. Leadership is not screaming and erupting for no reason and screaming at the other dugout and having the other dugout laugh at you because it's so stupid. That's not leadership. That's trying to perform and trying to force things that aren't there. I'll tell you another thing that it, it is not leadership. Adam Wainwright was witty. He was charming. He knew how to deal with the media. He entertained the media. He was a funny guy. Even during bad times, he'd make fun of himself for how bad he was doing. Michaelis tries to do that, except he is not a comedian. And I know the TV people love him when he tries to do the Miles Michaelis comedy routine. I don't care about that. No one should care about that. He's got to focus on pitching, and if he can put his mind 100% on pitching, I think he can get back to being better. Uh, better to where we have confidence in him as maybe a number two starter. The difference between me and maybe some of you, and it's okay to disagree, I haven't given up on the idea that he can fill that role. But as of now, I'm skeptical. i got to see it. And it starts with getting your head straight. Screw it back on straight. Because no one needs you to be anything more than a really good starting pitcher. Uh, Sonny Gray will be a leader. Lance Lynn will be a leader. Kyle Gibson will be a leader. They're all established as leaders. Gibson, more of the good cop. Lynn, the bad cop. Gray, somewhere in between. They don't need you to try to impersonate Adam Wainwright. To just pitch better, you can still do it. It's not like your stuff has diminished. You got to fix your sinker, and you got to fix your head, and you got to quit trying to do comedy for Jim Hayes. All due respect, and you got to you got to stop like showing you're the tough guy. You're going to take on the the whole Cubs dugout. Okay, stop it. Worry about the pitching and 100 percent commitment to concentrating on pitching, and maybe he can bounce back. I don't, I don't foreclose on that. I think it's possible. So the Cardinals, one through five, they have a very old rotation. Uh, they still don't have uh, much depth behind it. And I know that the guys in the rotation, talking about the three new guys, plus Michaelis, have a really positive history of providing a lot of innings. So you can say, well, I, as I just did, well, they're old. They're really old. Okay, there's a, maybe an increased injury risk. Okay, because that sort of happens with age. So I'm taking that into account, and I am expressing some apprehension over the fact that it's a really old rotation. And I've already said a million times, they do, not, they do not have enough depth, and I'm afraid they're going to do what they always do, which we, we know is, here we go again, they overrate their own talent. And that's what got them in this damn mess to begin with. They overestimate and overrate what they had in starting pitching before, and then everything collapsed, and the the season went to hell. Sixty three seasons in the in the expansion era, fourth worst fourth worst winning percentage in those sixty three seasons. The root cause, absolute across the board, virtually failure in starting pitching, and a lack of depth behind the guys you actually put in the rotation. I'm not comfortable with where they are. I think they need more. And I hope they're not going to start taking bows or declaring that, uh, oh, this has been a, you know, this is a dramatic transformation. No, it's not. It's really three really good steps, in my opinion. And again, by the way, my friends, you don't, listen, man, you don't have to follow all the clowns out there and, you know, go from one extreme. It's all or nothing. They're either all garbage or they're like, oh, man, oh, the Cardinals are great. Oh, these three guys, they're, oh, the Cardinals just, they hit a home run with these three guys. I'm so excited. You don't have to be that guy, but you don't have to be the guy. Well, they're all a bunch of junk. I'm not praising Mo. Don't be a clown. You don't have to be a clown. Just use, just use the brain your parents 
and God or whoever whoever gave you? Because the answer is not built on extremes here. The answer is they've made some good moves. And it's not my fault if you cannot comprehend or you're not willing to comprehend, for example, how good a guy like Kyle Gibson is, much better than you think. And it's all based on fact. So the three steps that they've taken are good steps. That's true for people that are reasonable and fair. That's true to say that. You know what also is true? They need more. I like three moves. Now I want to see a fourth in terms of the starting pitching. I think both of those, you can take that position because both things are, are true. All right. No, uh, uh, Gray, Gibson, Lynn, all right, three good moves, three good steps. Un, uh, too much uncertainty for my comfort after that. That's also true. Both things can be true. So don't be a clown. It's okay to recognize there's value in what they did, but that you also recognize that their work is not done. And that's what I'm afraid of. You know, they're going to start doing victory laps or something. And I don't want to, listen, I don't want to be like, you know, like nasty towards Mo based on what he's done so far because the offseason is not over. I think he's off to a good start. I want to see an even better finish. That's my point. And, you know, we know about the bullpen, and that's another thing. We've talked about it. And they still have some people they can trade. I don't know. I just want to see more. And I don't think that makes me or you or anyone who feels the same way, I don't think it uh, makes you feel or should make us feel like we're greedy because we're not. Mr. Jim Hewer. More is better. More is better. No, I it definitely, it definitely is. It, it, yeah, they need to adjust some more. But I think the gray thing, and people go, "Oh, this is t- this is he's much better than you think." I can't. Are, are know, people ripping him? I, it, I think people are again back to the. Well, it wasn't Nolan. It wasn't Yamamoto. Well, yeah. Well, he's better. First of all, he's better than Nola. That, you gave okay. numbers that proved it. Yes, he's he's better than Nola right now in their careers. He had a much better season. Than Nola did in. in Twenty twenty three, and I think uh, over the last three years he's better than than Nola. So, m- update your brains, update your minds. Okay, actually, sp- go to FanGraph, spend a, twenty minutes fiddling around. You'll learn some stuff. Um, and is he Yamamoto? No, he's not Yamamoto. But um, who in their right minds actually thought or still thinks that it was a realistic possibility that they go sign Yamamoto? I didn't. I never did. And I've been, I've been straightforward with you all on that. Um, there's a lot of ways to build a rotation. You don't have to go get the guy, Yamamoto, that um, is going to be the object of a insane bidding war, one that Bill DeWitt will never engage in. And you, you can be down on him by that. But my point is, not going to do that. So... Is there another way to do it? Yeah, there, there are other ways to do it. And that's the part that maybe people don't recognize enough. It's not just spending. It's also making deals and having the courage maybe to give up a player that you don't want. Or maybe you can talk some people into something out there in, at the GM office with other teams where they have an obsession on this or that, and you can take advantage of that. I don't know. But if everybody thinks that the spending is the only way to build a rotation, no, it's not. Uh, you also got to start. They got to get back to where they could actually develop quality pitching, but that can't be done in one winter. That's that's going to take several years to do that. Anyway, that's all I got. One thing that happened when I saw the news breaking, so I was shocked because I thought for sure, I really believe that they still can do this. I really thought they were going to get a starter through the trade. That's where this pitcher that could fill in in the top of the rotation somewhere was coming from, based on what they had done previously. I really thought that. I was surprised that they went out and spent money on Gray. Not saying they couldn't or they shouldn't. I was shocked that they did, the Cardinals. And I think it's a good move. I can't, I don't find any problem with this move at all. Not at all. You know? If he was a guy breaking down all the time or not giving you innings, then it would be stupid. Uh, it would be way too risky. But he's got a really solid history in terms of taking the ball. Now, he had some minor ailments 
in 21 and 22, so he averaged about 26 starts instead of where you want him to be, like 32. But that hardly makes him a fragile little kitten. I mean, he still gave you a hell of a lot of quality innings, is is my point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and last year, he was full metal jacket as far as that stuff. He was one of the best. He was easily one of the best uh, best five, six starting pitchers in the majors last year. And if you're talking uh, number one starters, uh, well, see, let's see. 30 teams, that would mean there's 30, no, 30 number one starters because each team's got a number one starter. Yeah, I think he's a number one starter. <laughs> I mean, so anyway, but uh, good, good start, but I'd like to see a strong finish. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to talking to Keith Lyle, uh, Keith Law about yeah, you were Keith Lyle. If we're talking to Rams <laughs> former safety, if he wants to call us, no Keith Law. Look forward to talking to him at um, four thirty, and then Dane Perry, our friend from Birdie Work and also from CBS Sports, Keith Law from the Athletic, and Keith Law, uh, from what I read when he gave, ranked his top free agents, uh, he he likes. Sonny Gray a lot. Uh, that resonates with me because Keith Law does not hesitate to basically say some teams dumb for doing what they did. You know, he he can be harsh with when he thinks someone's screwed something up or they're making a mistake. He 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 really liked his what he had to write about uh, Sonny Gray before all of this began uh, was was really positive. And, you know, Jay Jaffe's done the same thing. R.J. Anderson likes him. The, you know, the people, Ben Clemens likes him. He was, like, he was a little more nervous about the injuries. And I'm not, listen, man, everybody can choose what they want as far as what they're concerned about. I don't think the injury stuff is anything that's alarming to me because, number one, he's never had any kind of even remotely significant arm injury. You know, and everything's been relatively minor stuff that has nothing to do with his shoulder or his elbow, you know. So uh, I, I don't I don't think his injury history is alarming at all. So, I mean, but it's okay to, if, if, as much as I respect Ben, if he wants to, you know, say that that makes him a little uncomfortable, so be it. I mean, that's the whole point. You look for things you like about a, a, a guy, a pitcher, and things that, you know, things you may not like so much. But when you sign a 34-year-old free agent, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's going to be stuff that you you sit there and you say, well, I know he hasn't been hurt that much, and I know it hasn't been anything serious. But that still makes me nervous because he's 34, and he'll be with them through his age 37 season. I get it. I get it. But you got to go do something. And, um, again, everyone can go outside to their homes or their their place of employment uh, or even when you're at friendlies hanging out, you you can go step outside and howl at the moon because you want Bill DeWitt to spend 190 million or whatever on Yamamoto. It ain't gonna happen, so don't raise your blood pressure. Uh, let's let's direct the energy on improving. As fans, let's direct. I'm gonna direct my energy in pushing for them to do something else to go along with the good moves they've made so far. Something else in terms of starting pitching. I'm with you. And other people have texted in about that, saying I'd like to see one more quality arm to add more competition to the to the mix. So a lot of people are with you. And, you know, uh, like Will Leach and I were saying, you know, it could be a swingman type that can do both. Mm-hmm. Now, you ain't going to get a swingman, a so-called swingman here, because those guys like to start. When you say, well, we can't, pro-, you know, we really can't promise you that you'll be a starting pitcher here. Oh, and they got four or five offers to be a starting pitcher. So, oh, you think we're gonna? You think the Cardinals are gonna get that guy? No, he ain't gonna sign with a team that can't ensure that he'll be a starting pitcher. But you can trade for someone like him. They don't have any say in the matter, right? Yes. So that's a that's a kind of a crass way to look at it, but it has has to be absolutely true. 